angels waging war in the unseen realm. Global events fulfilling biblical prophecy, eternal life. What lies beyond mortality? From analyzing the paranormal from a biblical worldview to the discussion of cutting edge science and technology, conspiracy, discovery, special investigative reports. Unafraid to explore the challenging issues facing humanity. Welcome to another edition of Skywatch TV. Contrary to popular belief, the United States did not win World War II. Welcome to Skywatch TV. I'm Derek Gilbert. What does that mean for those of us living 50, 60 years after, 70 years after the fact? Our guest has written a new book that uh, gets into this, and the uh, implications are rather ominous. He is a veteran broadcaster, uh, author of many books, including his new one, which uh, in typical Steve Coya style is a two-handed work, uh, Empire Beneath the Ice, How the Nazis Won World War II. It is our honor to welcome back to Skywatch TV, Steve Quayle. Steve? Hey, Derek. Good to be with you. Uh, boy, I'm, I'm excited about talking about the contemporary headlines of today being directly linked back to the closing days of the official close of World War II. Mm -hmm. And as I make the case, most people in the United States are unaware that we went to war with the remainder of the Nazi party in the South Antarctic and in especially mm. the South Atlantic. And prior to the closing of uh, when the Nazis knew they were going to have to basically hightail it out of uh, Germany and all of their occupied territories, they sent a flotilla to uh, what's called New Schwabenland. Mm -hmm. New Schwabenland was based on the exploration that the Germans did, who staked out Antarctica 20 years, 20 plus years before the official close. So the fascinating thing about how uh, history records it, you know, I think it was uh, Churchill said that all history is written by the victors, but that's not true in this case, because in the book Empire Beneath the Ice, the entire German industrial complex was moved into pretty much South America and into the area in Antarctic in basically a subterranean tropical paradise. Mm -hmm. The Germans, as most people knew, believed that they were the descendants of the Aryans. They d believed in the northern uh, province of uh, the outer, if you will, the uh, outermost part of the north was where their descendants came from. And by the way, they're mm. on record as saying is doing away, their goal was to do away with, with Christianity in order to bring the pagan gods back. Man, it sounds like a headline out of a contemporary newspaper. Mm -hmm. Uh, and Tom Horn and I were talking just uh, uh, probably less than 12 hours ago about the Temple of Baal being erected both in uh, London, Trafalgar Square, and also in New York. Mm -hmm. And a thousand other cities. And a thousand other cities. So all of this stuff, most people couldn't embrace it at the time it was written. I find it interesting when, when the Lord moved on my heart, Derek, to put out Empire Beneath the Ice, it was because the whole unsettled nature of the advanced technology of World War II, and as you and I were talking uh, during the lunch break, what happened to, I would say, the uh, projected uh, surrender of the uh, German government, we under uh, the, the presidents that were, you know, following both on Eisenhower and Truman before him, we basically brought in all the Nazis. Right. We brought in the top scientists and the OSS, which was the equivalent of uh, their SS and the Nazi uh, intelligence organizations. We incorporated all them into our intelligence, our aerospace. And for the record, there's nothing in the U.S. aerospace industry that basically wasn't uh, under the command of one of uh, 250 Nazi elite scientists or mm. industrialists. Mm. So the end of World War II, we're told the uh, German government surrendered. Uh, of course, the official history is that marked the end of World War II. It was over. It was done. Germany is now an ally of Britain, the United States, Canada and the West. Uh, and yet the Nazi party didn't actually surrender in the sense that we would understand it. So we, we, we're dealing with with more than just a the government of a nation state here, we're dealing with a, a, a 
religious movement, a cult, a, 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 an occult organization. Absolutely. That continued after World War II? Probably the most startling revelation that came to me in the research is that there was no separating the advanced technology, the advanced manufacturing. There was no uh, delineation that this was just the, a bunch of German scientists from you know, uh, the beginning of the 20th century just applying the physics that they learned there. Uh -uh. Rather, what was interesting is the amount of time that the Nazi high command, whether it's Heinrich Himmler or Adolf Hitler himself, all of the Nazi high command were into the secret organizations. And by the way, as this uh, broadcast is being taped today, what are we, the 29th? Of, yep. Yeah. Um, March 29th, uh, less than a week ago, the very library of Heinrich Himmler. I just, made that, I just yeah. made that very note here to yeah. ask you about it. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's put it this way. A lot of people poo-poo, ha-ha, and try to deny the occult basis. The word occult means hidden, means occluded. But there's no denying it when you read that the 13,000 volumes were hidden away and they were all of a sudden found. When you and I were talking again, Derek, when we started uh, just discussing how we want to approach this today for this program. It was fascinating to see that from the time this book, made, my book, Empire Beneath the Ice, how the Nazis won World War II, how the timing of the book and the headlines of the day, uh, I would say this, they went into orbit. In other words, there were so many world or global headlines of Hitler, of the reissuance of Mein Kampf, of all, you know, this Nazi's bones being found. And interestingly enough, and we were talking about even your mom watching mm -hmm. the show, the History Channel did probably one of the most, I would say, intense investigations, the most well-funded documentaries ever done in the history of the documentaries, and they absolutely proved that Hitler did not die in the bunker. Hmm. Interesting. Stalin, I won't say on the radio what he said, but he said that that's blankety-blank got away. Eisenhower said there's not one shred of evidence to even indicate that Hitler died in the bunker. Hmm. The History Channel's presentation and the investigation was second to none. And the thing that the History Channel wouldn't allow is the people that were under, uh, undertaking the investigation, how powerful of forces came against them. Hmm. Because again, here, here it is in a nutshell, we'll make it really easy. The Nazis basically built the United States post-World War in the areas of aer aeronautics, obviously rocketry, Dr. Warner von Braun, you know, and uh, pharmaceuticals. Mm. IG Pharma split up, but right. it's interesting. If you look at who the biggest corporations in America, and then we deal with um, all of the intelligence assets, and then this strange twist of events, of what was the OSS became the Central Office of Strategic Services became the Central Intelligence Agency, and how much of the cover-up on the highest levels of government wanted to hide this Nazi and I would call it partnership, hmm. a feigned surrender, but behind the scenes the power brokers and we've all heard the stories Wall Street and the Bolshevik Revolution, Anthony Sutton, we've all seen this, mm -hmm. but what most people don't understand is the war machine that even built Hitler up were some of the, uh, you know, I would just call them the biggest banking families in the history of the world. But also now we see, as we're doing this uh, uh, television interview, we've got the biggest banks now controlling all the money of the world. Give me control of a nation's money, and I care not who writes its laws, yes. a famous statement. But we're, we're at a point now where the Antarctica, who would have thought of this? I didn't know this. I mean, I knew I had to write it. I didn't know. But where you would have the Pope, you would have <laughs> President uh, uh, the entity in the White House. That's how I refer to him. <laughs> and you would have the Patriarch Krill, the head of the Russian Orthodox Church, all headed to Antarctica and having secret meetings. Remember this, and I think it's important, ladies and gentlemen, you understand that when an official version is given to the press, that's not the real version. So what we're, what we're talking about is a, a timed meeting for the leaders of the world to go to Antarctica for what purpose? 
Well, according to sources that volunteer this information to me, I can't know this stuff unless someone tells it to me. Mm -hmm. But they're very concerned with the gates, the ancient gates. Hmm. Well, you know, people used to probably poo-poo Tom and poo-poo me. All those guys are watching too much TV. No, actually, and we were ta we'll talk about that later. No, <laughs> TV's actually, been watching you. TV's <laughs> been watching us, especially with the X-Files. Mm -hmm. So the point is, is that we're, we're seeing and hearing reports now of coordinated temple slash stargate complexes being activated all over the world. Hmm. And, and again, that, that relates to the big 3D printers that they're going to use to create the gates to the temple of Baal that they're going to put up all over the, all right. the planet. Um, let's talk about the significance of Antarctica because this is an aspect of human history, 20th century history that I've heard about and it's always been intriguing, but I never really understood what was going on. What was Operation High Jump all about? What significance did the Nazis really place on Antarctica? Well, Antarctica, the Nazis pretty much staked it out. And most people don't understand this. The Nazis and Germans, Nazis, at, you know, the National Socialist Party actually had legal claim to about 250,000 square miles. And again, they called it, not Antarctica, they called it uh, New Schwabenland, mm -hmm. okay? And it's like S-C-H-W-A-B-E-N, you know, Schwabenland. And it was based on the exploration ship, uh, New Schwabia. And what the Germans were able to establish is that underneath the ice canopy, there was a hidden world. It was almost like a paradise. And see, mm. that fits a lot of the ancient myths about Shambhala and right. all this stuff that the New Agers have, have uh, uh, grabbed onto, not knowing the real history. So it's fascinating that the Germans also had U-boats that weren't accounted for. There were official records of U-boats, but they had the 21 series U-boat mm -hmm. that was kind of like an underwater freighter. And what was fascinating is they claimed it was the size of an aircraft carrier. Wow. Well, a lot of people can't relate to that, but just in the last month, there were two Japanese equivalents, because everybody was spying on everybody, okay? But the thing that the United States government couldn't get away from was all the reports of all the U-boats they couldn't account for and the secret weapons they couldn't find being transferred to Antarctica. Hmm. And now, most people know this, that even uh, 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 the entity in the White House went to Patagonia, that's the president, and Patagonia is a land of the big feet, giants, not Bigfoot, the hairy creature, but big feet. And Ferdinand Magellan went into great detail. So now you've got the story in the special operations community of these giant, pun intended, tunnels, and they're giant, going all the way from Antarctica into Patagonia. Hmm. And so what's fascinating is what we found, Derek, is especially is that Hitler had an obsession with tunnels. And when he sent out the Anunerbi, it was a special uh, group within the SS, mm -hmm. which, by the way, stands for Schwarzensone, which, forgive my German, but that means black sun. Right. And interestingly enough, that David Bowie just died, uh, his... Uh, black star. Black yeah. star. Right, right. So when you're talking about black star and black sun, you're talking about the occult world of Lucifer yeah. and the inner world of hell. Yeah. And fascinating, Admiral Byrd, who is well known, the most uh, amazing polar and uh, South Pole, both Antarctic and Arctic explorer, he basically had his journal and they, they, they silenced him, okay, after Operation High Jump. 13 ships, 26 aircraft, a complete battleship armada, mm -hmm. and we get our head handed to us in a platter by Nazi flying machines. Now, the Russians were interestingly in Argentina. Mm -hmm. They were watching all this. They actually filmed some of this stuff. The encounter of the ships, the airships, that were able to fly at 25,000 miles plus per hour. Hmm. Well, talk to anybody that's ever been, a, you know, flown a World War II aircraft, <laughs> even, you know, coming into the jet aircraft, the early age, and there's nothing that could compare with that. Yet, what I found mind-blowing. You know, it usually takes a little bit to blow my <laughs> mind. Well, I've got to say this. The research that uh, I've laid out in Empire Beneath the Ice was mind-blowing. I was contacted by a general uh, four-star, actually a couple of them, after I did a coast-to-coast -coast show. And I was talking about stargates. And they said to me, they said, you know, 
you need to know you're you're in the right direction. And I don't recommend it to people. It's got kind of a tacky title. And if they want to understand that there's a scene in a movie called Hellboy. Mm -hmm. uh, did you ever see that? Yes. Okay. Do you remember when the Germans have kind of like a circular gate and they have all the power running into it? Mm -hmm. And there's a guy that's wearing a, it's kind of like a Boris and Natasha look-alike, except Boris is a tall, bald guy. Right, Instead right. of a short guy with a funny hat. And that they go through the gate. Well, the idea that the gates of hell would be opening is the only explanation that when Jesus said, you know, that he's going to build his church upon the rock of faith and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Right. You cannot deal with the rise of uh, the rise of the third Reich and obviously being the progenitors of the final Reich without understanding. They spent so much time in the world of the occult. They would conjure up. They would have uh, psychic endeavors where guys like Dietrich Eckhart, some of the most uh, famous occultists in history, they were all uh, uh, followers of Madame Blavatsky, mm -hmm. uh, obviously Aleister Crowley. And by the way, people, it wasn't just the Nazis. It was the British who enlisted right. Aleister Crowley. Right. So this idea that Stargates would be a what would you call it, a buffet or a cornucopia of some of the worst technologies, some of the most evil thoughts, and that there's literally, and I record in my book, it, there are literal cases of psychics giving birth to entities. I, I'm not talking about babies now. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to spiritual entities that were dictating some of the most advanced physics, the most advanced weapon structures, hmm. and basically giving them their step-by-step -step instructions. And, and that, that, that's mind-blowing because, again, it's not an earthly fight. We read Ephesians 6, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, right, but right. against principles. Well, the Nazis went overboard, pun intended, to make sure that they could, in essence, control their world, uh, the Antarctica, New Schwabenland. Mm -hmm. And what's fascinating to me, when Admiral Byrd was yeah, basically his aircraft, prior to this time was sucked into a, 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 a hidden earth, you know, he met the guy called the king of the world, okay? Hmm. Now people, th this, is, this is history, this is the bird diaries. People always, chi you know, the skeptics will challenge everything. Unfortunately, they're getting their orders from the guys who are controlling everything. Mm -hmm. So the fascinating aspect of bird, he, he met with the king of the world and he was shown their flying, quote, saucers. And as you held the front of my book up, this, by the way, is an, an amazing illustration. Go ahead and hold yeah, it up. Yeah. This is under the Antarctic. What you see the hole is the hole in the northern, uh, uh, I'm sorry, in the South Pole. There's also one in the North Pole. Hmm. And the design for these was literally a function of a psychic dictation along with different engineering drawings that had existed by the people who are the occult engineers. Mm. You know, you talk about imagination. Well, in this case, they were uh, simply, t they were stenographers from, you know, from hell, or stenographers for the mouthpiece of hell. Yeah, it's sort of an echo of what happened in Mount Hermon when the watchers came down exactly. and gave technology to the, uh, humanity back right. then. Um, so the, the uh, mission of, of Admiral Byrd was to do what? Was it to eliminate? Basically, to, do, 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 to identify, destroy, and eliminate the last vestige of what they believed to be where the Nazi holdout under the ice and in the Antarctic. What they met was with total defeat. It started in August of, of four, uh, 1946 and ended in February of 1947. Hmm. There are actual Russian spy, you know, uh, photographs, movies of the absolute taking out of the U.S. aircraft, you know? Wow. And so obviously the technology dictated the different terms. It appears that an agreement was made, and the agreement was made that, uh, that the United States would maintain its, uh, uh, what I would call, false victory, but that they would take their hierarchy, would take their orders from the German hierarchy, who was simply submitting to the king of the earth and all of the techno, let's just call them what they were, techno entities, okay? Mm. And so this is a part that most people find absolutely, uh, sometimes impossible to believe. 
But I'll tell you, as I, as I footnoted this, as I continued on with this, it got deeper and deeper, but it wasn't becoming more mysterious. It was becoming clearer. Hmm. How did the uh, U.S. government explain, I, I presume that the, these battles fought by Admiral Byrd and his forces were unsuccessful, that there were losses of American soldiers, yes, American airmen. How did the U.S. government explain that away? Well, first of all, they wouldn't acknowledge it publicly. It was top secret. And they went, the only time they ever mentioned it was a scientific expedition. Unfortunately, there were no scientists on board, okay? Uh, mm. And you usually don't send aircraft carriers, destroyers, and, uh, you know, all the sophisticated. By the way, in those days, they had to have their prop planes uh, with jet assists on them, you know, mm -hmm. uh, to be, just because of the, the temperature and the, you're dealing with vast areas of, uh, of um, area in the Antarctic you had to cover. But again, the fascinating thing was that Byrd in his original writings, you know, keep in mind, this is 1946-47, Byrd in his previous expeditions would talk even as they were going to the North Pole, that as they got further and further north, it got warmer and warmer, not huh. cooler and cooler. Same thing south. It got warmer and warmer. Uh, there's a couple of uh, recent photographs. Up until they released the recent photographs, NASA, there was never a photograph where you could literally see the entire polar ice cap or the uh, south polar ice cap from a, a satellite mm -hmm. and giant holes. That's just as Admiral Byrd. Now, Forrestal, James Forrestal, we got to deal with him because he was uh, the actual first secretary of the Navy during this time. Well, Forrestal wanted to tell the people what the bird expedition, he wanted to come clean with all sure. this stuff, okay? And it's recorded because his brother, and I forget his name, but his brother was briefed at length, you know, by the first secretary of the Navy, I'm sorry, first secretary of defense, that this was basically what we would be fighting with and detailing and dealing with. Even Admiral Byrd before Congress said, we're going to have to deal with people that are able to fly from one pole to the other in a matter of minutes. Hmm. Well, you can calculate the distance, you yeah. know how fast you're flying. So the fascinating thing is uh, Secretary of Defense Forrestal gets thrown out the third story of the Bethesda Naval Hospital on the very day oh. he was be to be released. His brother had, they claimed he was crazy. Mm -hmm. From the time of, and I'm, I'll call it what it is, uh, you know, not never be politically correct, always tell the truth. But the point being is, is that he was ordered, hit, and he was in essence murdered, and to shut him up. Hmm. And the fascinating thing is, is that when you see those who are familiar with it, from that point on, Admiral Byrd was put into seclusion, only came out a couple times before he passed away. So they shut him, you know, it's not only shutting someone up, it's shutting them down, hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So this was a, an amazing case of shutting them up and shutting them down, hmm. in his case permanently. Byrd died a natural cause. Now, Byrd's diary comes into you. The, 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 the Nazis were looking for a place called Hyperborea, okay? That was a great frozen uh, kingdom of their ancestors. Mm -hmm. And then they were looking for a place called Thule, T-H-U-L-E, and there was a society called the Thule who, who built themselves around this energy called Vril, V-R-I-L. Mm -hmm. So in the hierarchy of the German high command and their intelligence organization was totally under Heinrich Himmler, okay, and the Order of the Black Sun. Now we fast forward and we see that the same captains of industry, whether it was IG Farben before it was broken up, you know, and all of the advances in the, what I would call the public space program versus the black space program, and black meaning hidden, right. occluded, you know, what we all see, what we think is flying saucers. Fascinating that the corresponding end of Operation High Jump and the Roswell uh, you know, we're talking 1947. So just a few months after the conclusion of Operation High Jump. You got it. Yeah. And so, you know, we basically limped back to the States. And, and what was fascinating in um, Argentina, uh, and by the way, I, uh, this is fascinating, uh, you know, uh, for, for Tom and Gary sitting in the audience. Uh, <laughs> the, I get a call from a gentleman. He said, my grandfather has pictures of Hitler uh, you know, basically his last days in Peru. So follow this. This is very cool. Hitler gets flown out of Berlin. This is what the History Channel 
he, he basically flies to Spain. You know, Spain was supposedly neutral, but they weren't. Mm -hmm. Then he flies from uh, Spain to the Canary Islands, and then he's taken by U-boat. Now, everybody thinks that the U-boat that Hitler fled uh, the Canary Islands and is one of their typical really small things, you know, and blah, blah, blah. They had no understanding. They assume he went out on the U-boat. There's evidence of eyewitness testimony. He went out on something in a saucer. Now, Ooh. these saucers come out of the water. It's very cool, okay? And, uh, you know, as, as the technology was so sophisticated then, the weapon systems were so, and then they weren't, they were thousands of years in advance. And so with the advanced uh, uh, weapon systems, flying machines, and everything else, you can understand anybody who controls the past, it's kind of something we use over and over when we we're interviewed by you, and even in our series, True Legends. Mm -hmm. They who control the past determine the future. Right. So if we know that they had all this advanced technology, because again, you can't go basically from stone carvings to uh, advanced physics you know, on your own. Then you go back and the Germans were really captivated by the battles of ancient races. So the Ananerbi, which basically means the ancestral heritage, they would spend all the money they needed and they'd go all over the world. And guess what? This is something that was fascinating. Uh, Dr. Mengele, Dr. Death, he was concerned. The two things he was looking for more than anything, you're going to love this, is giants mm -hmm. and dwarfs, okay? Interesting. Giants and dwarfs. Now, Mengele pretty much uh, is, is given the father of twinning, being, being able to produce. Mm -hmm. But twinning was so successful that one little town in Brazil, they had, you probably read about it, you know, there was even a movie made about it, but they, they had uh, 200 sets of twins, mm -hmm. okay? So Mengele, Dr. Joseph Mengele, was active in both uh, Argentina, Brazil, and Peru. Now, Peru is really important. That's where Hitler chose to hide out in the predetermined uh, and predesigned underground cities of Peru. Mm. Now, one of the, go unfortunately, ahead. Well, unfortunately, we're running out of time here. But uh, I thought only, this was an introduction. You, yeah, this <laughs> is the introduction because the next program will have to take us into the present day and how this is impacting us in our 21st century world. But we want to make sure that you get the benefit of the uh, research that Steve Quayle's put into the new book, Empire Beneath the Ice, How the Nazis Won World War II. As always, we'd like to offer some additional uh, work, uh, Steve Quayle's work uh, called Xenogenesis, uh, and then the uh, classic work by Tom Horn and Chris Putnam on the path of the immortals. Together, those three books, a $100 value. You can own all three. Again, the uh, centerpiece being Empire Beneath the Ice for $69.95. The, uh, again, uh, the three books, a $100 value, $69.95 online at the uh, Skywatch TV store. That's skywatchtvstore.com. Again, we've only scratched the surface. I know, hate to leave people hanging, but uh, rather uh, uh, get them back for the next program. Uh, we'll continue this discussion. Uh, Thank you, Derek. Steve Quayle, the book Empire Beneath the Ice, How the Nazis World Won World War II. We thank you for watching as we keep watch. I'm Derek Gilbert, and this is Skywatch TV.